Hi boys and girls, good morning or afternoon, whatever time you're watching this video. Happy Friday, I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Um, so today is Friday, September 18th and I'm going to be going over the directions for you. Our objective for today is going to be that students will be able to synthesize across text and express understanding of hardships during the Great Depression. Our guiding question for today is going to be, what hardships did people face during the Great Depression? Just a little reminder for um, homework, you do need to make sure that you read chapters 11 and 12 of Bud Not Buddy, and that of course you're taking annotations and writing down um, things that you learn, new things that you learn. Um, also make sure to complete today's assignments, which are going to be in Clever on the InSync app. Um, your first assignment will be to definitely make sure you finish watching this whole video and then you will go ahead and watch Mrs. Smith's video on the Wit and Wisdom um, lessons. Uh, you will make sure that you watch day 10 video. It will be under your assignments, so just kind of take a look at that because it does have a lot of information for you. Um, please also make sure that you complete a lesson one uh, module 1, Lesson 9, Question Set 3, and of course, number 3, uh, Module 1, Lesson 10, Focusing Task Question. I'm going to be going over these with you in this video. But before we get started with that, I want to just make sure that you write down some vocabulary words. So please take the time to pause this video um, during this slide so that you can write these down. So as you're writing these down, I'm going to go ahead and go over them. Devour. Devour is a verb and it means to ravenously eat. It can also mean to process something greedily for one's enjoyment. So please make sure you write down the word and the meaning only, which is why it is circled in a red box. There are examples. You don't have to write the examples, but if it's going to help you for later on to remember what these words mean, then feel free to write them. So for devour, an example can be, I'm so hungry I could devour the whole turkey. Another example for the word devour means, she devours each new novel that is that this author puts out. So um, sometimes when we devour something, we finish it really fast because we are enjoying it. Um, the next word that you're going to go ahead and be writing is going to be the word or if you already wrote it, it's going to be the word uh, tone, which is a noun. Tone means the attitude that is conveyed through someone's choice of words or inflection. It also can mean the general mood of something. Um, so please make sure what you make. Please make sure that you write down what is in the box. And also, we do have some examples. You don't have to write down these synonyms or examples, but um, they will be helpful if you. Are going to have trouble with remembering the word so if you'd like to write them down you can so um, a synonym for the word tone can be an accent or inflection and then for the second definition it could be the tone of an atmosphere or someone's attitude or spirit moving on we have one more vocabulary word that you need to make sure that you write down into your journal the word is impressed Please make sure you write down the word and the meanings, all meanings. You don't have to write down the synonym or example. So for the word impressed, impressed is a verb. Um, the meaning, the first meaning is to make something known. An example of this could be the minister impressed the children with the importance of honesty. Definition number two for the word impress, to deeply affect or influence. An example of this, his earnest desire to learn impressed his teachers. And last but not least, the third definition for the word impress, to use pressure to leave a mark. An example, now you're ready to impress your pattern of your clay pot. So that means you're pressing onto something. So as we can see, the word impress does have um, specific and multiple meanings to its word. Make sure you have these down in your journal. 
Next, I'm going to actually be going over the steps on how to log into Clever, just in case some students are still confused about that or don't know how. So please make sure you're listening to this part. First step, you need to make sure that you log into Clever. And of course, click on the icon that says Miss Villarreal 6th grade ELA. Once you do that, your next step is to click on the Great Minds in Sync app. It will be the very first app that is listed on my page in Clever. Once you get into the Great Minds in Sync app, um, it might or might not have you log in again. And if that happens, if you know you click on the Great Me the Great Minds in Sync app and it tells you to log in, you're gonna want to go ahead and just click the option to log in with Clever. So once you go in, it's going to go ahead and you are going to have um, two or three assignments. It just depends. Um, the first thing I would suggest you do is to watch the video day 10. And once you finish watching that video, you complete your assignments. Okay. So once again, step number three is to watch the video that is labeled day 10 and then complete the assignments below. It should look something similar to this. You will have the le uh, module one lesson nine question set three, and then you will have the module one lesson 10 focusing question task. And I'm gonna go ahead and go over this now. So once you finish watching the video, you will go ahead and get started with lesson nine question set three. You might be wondering, what is this gonna look like? Well, let me go ahead and go over it for you. So I'm going to move my little self up here. Um, so what you're going to be doing in the uh, lesson nine question set three, you're actually going to just be reading a small passage and you're going to be answering some questions. Um, this has a total of six questions and they are kind of tricky. So you need to make sure that you read very carefully and that you use your strategies like process of elimination. Um, now, when you see little bubbles in your answer choices that have a little circle as you can see there's a little red uh, icon there for you when you see these bubbles it usually means that there's only one answer choice okay but if you see bubbles that look squared like this example it's because you can choose multiple answers which is a good and bad thing because sometimes, you know, we can kind of get confused when there's multiple answers. So it's really, really important that you know the difference between the circle options, which is only one answer choice, and then the little squared op options because this is asking for multiple answer choices. So please make sure that you read very carefully so that you don't let, um, you know, you don't let who they call the donut man confuse you, right? If you haven't heard that term, well, that's unfortunate, but hopefully you don't get confused and you don't let um, these test makers trick you, okay? So make sure you try your very best because this is for a grade. So when you finish your six question quiz on great minds, you're gonna go ahead and see something that looks like this, okay? You have to make sure that you check double check and triple check your work because last time I had students who um, they just submitted and they did not put any answers. So that was a zero. And it's very unfortunate because you turn in your quiz and then you have no answer choices and you get a zero. Like you should have just checked your work the first time to make sure that your answers were filled out. Okay, so please make sure it will great minds will give you this option where you can click on number one and it'll take you back to that first page and then you can click on number two and it'll take you back to that second page and then if you click on number three it'll take you back to that third page so once you double check triple check your work please make sure you have to click finish if you just leave your test like that it's not going to submit your results and i'm not going to have your grade and then i'm going to be thinking that you did not take your test so please make sure you submit okay once you finish that boys and girls you're going to go ahead and see that you will have your focusing question now okay so that will be your next assignment your focusing question is going to be something that looks like this so on monday we went ahead and completed one of these together thank you so much to all of my students who completed that successfully with me on monday we're going to be trying it again but this time you're going to be trying this on your own 
I want to see what you've learned this whole week and I want to see what you can do by yourself without the teacher's help. Okay, so it's really important that you try your very best and you use all of the notes that you've taken in class so far. Um, you will go ahead and click start. Okay, once you click start, you're going to see something that looks like this. So let me go ahead and move my bubble over here. Or myself, I should say. And once you go ahead and click on this, um, this is going to be step seven, okay? So read the directions carefully and brainstorm before you start. Look at your handouts that you've been, uh, that you have been working on or refer to the classroom homepage for all of the links. So tomorrow, boys and girls, I'm actually going to be posting with, um, you know, a class post and it's going to have all of the links you need. It's going to have, um, the links to, um, the Kentucky flood video or the photo, it's going to have your links to the Hooverville article, it's going to have your links to the GM sit down strike video on YouTube, and of course an extra just link to a Great Depression video that we did see, I believe it was last week. So you are going to have all the links available for you so that you can use evidence in your um, to seek paragraph, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and explain to you what it is that you're going to be doing in this assignment. So this is the assignment that is extremely important. This is going to be our module one, lesson 10, focusing question task number two. So of course you would go ahead and always read the instructions, click start. So when you click start, what is what is it that you're going to see? Well, you're going to see something that looks like this and the teacher to see um, how long you've taken on this assignment. Don't worry, I'm not paying attention to the time. I'm paying attention to what type of quality work you're giving me. So that's extremely important. So today what you're going to be doing is you're going to be writing what hardships did people face in the Great Depression. Um, notice, you know, there is instructions here. So introduction. For the past, let me read it to us. For the past four lessons, we have read and reviewed several texts about life during the Great Depression. In this task, you will apply those understandings and write about the hardships people face during the during this time period. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that because that's that's the main. A focus here that is the prompt you are going to apply what you've learned throughout this week and write a, a, a small a two seek paragraph it, it does tell us so let me continue reading it says writing about this topic and crafting two two seek paragraphs will help you for later focusing questions and module the end of module tasks so once again you need to make sure that you write two to seek paragraphs. Now, here's the task. For an audience who has read and studied these texts the way you have, write two to seek paragraphs. Two, not just one. You need to make sure that you write two. Two to seek paragraphs in which you will explain two hardships people face during the De Great Depression. So that means you're not only writing one to seek paragraph, but you're going to be writing two. And you're going to make sure that you explain two hardships that people face during the Great Depression. You need to make sure that you do cite evidence. Well, miss, where can I cite evidence from? Well, you can at least use Bud Not Buddy, or you can even use the Hooverville's article that I do have a link for. This was the article that we did review on... Wednesday, so um, I will leave the link for you in our classroom homepage, um, and of course, along with the book and everything else that you need in order to successfully complete this task. So those links will be in our classroom uh, general homepage. I will make sure to leave like a little, um, a little announcement with, of course, the links that you need and the Bud Not Buddy book. Please remember to include proper citations for your textual evidence and of course follow the conventions of standard written English. So making sure that you are spelling things correctly, that 
you have punctuations, and that you're trying your best to follow um, the correct conventions of standard written English. You must include, it says right here, that you must use evidence from both bud not buddy and Hooverville. So you do need to use evidence from both of these um, websites or both both of these texts, right? Because bud not buddy is one text and then of course Hooverville's was another website that we use to find information. So you need to make sure that you use both of those. Now, if you want to, you can also include you know, evidence from Kentucky flood, that photograph that we examined where people were standing in line waiting for food after the uh, flood that had happened, or you can also use evidence from the uh, General Motors sit down strike video, which is what we saw yesterday. And of course, I do have a YouTube link for that video that I will leave for you. So, oh, once, once again, again I need to make sure that I be very clear about this. You must use evidence from not only Bud Not Buddy, but you also must use evidence from Hooverville. Those are the two that I'm looking for. If you want to include evidence from Kentucky Flood or from the sit down strike video, then you can do that as well. But for sure, you must include evidence from Bud Not Buddy and Hooverville. Um, I've been showing us this this whole week, so you know, there should really be no excuses on why you're not able to complete this task on your own. I gave us exemplars this Monday. I showed us all of this uh, textual evidence, all of these sites, the videos, we went over them. Use your handouts, use your notes, use all of the knowledge that you've learned. And if you haven't been covered, so you must make sure that in your um, two seek paragraphs, because you're going to be writing two, that you need to include two of the following three words. You can in either include loathsome, you can either include the word glum, which is what we wrote down yesterday, or you can include the word criminal. You only have to use two of those words in one of your paragraphs, or if you want to use, you know, both of the words in your paragraph, or if you want to, you know, be an exemplar scholar and use all three words in your two seek paragraphs, go for it, you know. But I just want to make the instructions clear that you only have to use two of those words one time, okay? One time each. So let's say, well, miss, uh, in my two-seek paragraph, I want to use the word loathsome and I want to use the word criminal. Okay, well, make sure you include loathsome and criminal into your two-seek paragraph at least one time, okay? So you're going to include loathsome one time and you're going to include criminal one time. Or if you want to, you know, choose different words that are listed there, like let's say you want to use glum and criminal, okay, fine. But at least using two of those words. That's what I'm going to be looking for. Now, your two paragraphs right here should include, what, they, what should they include? Well, they should include a topic statement. Not only that, but they should include um, the idea about hardships people face during the Great Depression. So once again, a topic statement. You need to make sure that you have a topic statement and that your topic statement is, um, you know, reviewing hardships people had during the Great Depression. That is your main prompt, okay? So that's what you're focusing on, hardships people had during the Great Depression. Of course, you need to make sure you include textual evidence, textual evidence from Bud Not Buddy, text, textual evidence from Hoovervilles, um, textual evidence from any other sources you want to use, like the Kentucky Flood video or the notes we had during class or even the General Motors sit-down strike. Of course, you need to make sure you explain your evidence, right? You always need to make sure how um, you explain how your evidence develops your idea so your elaboration this is where you write in your own words okay about the evidence that you went ahead and included into your essay not only that try and use transitional words and phrases like when you're trying to go into you know um, a different topic you can say transitional words like ex for example or um, you can say something like in conclusion 
or you can also use a lot of other transitional words and phrases and you can use in other words or to explain there's a lot of transitional words and phrases you need to make sure that you do that you include transition words or phrases to show connections and then you need to also make sure that you have a concluding statement, okay? This concluding statement is going to reinforce your topic about what your idea, what your main idea was and what your topic statement uh, had mentioned. So make sure that when you do write your concluding statement that you try your very best to also include, um, you know, the main idea, which is the hardships that people face during the Great Depression. And then, of course, make sure that you include citations, okay? Um, some of you are like, well, miss, what citations do we use? Well, after you put your evidence, you need to make sure that you not only put a page number, but that you include a citation. So let's say I'm using a, a quote from Bud Not Buddy. I'm going to put Curtis and then of course a comma and I'm going to put the page. Let's say it was page 49 and then I'm going to close my bracket. And that is of course after my evidence from the book. Let's say I'm getting evidence from Hoovervilles. Okay, well what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and put another citation. You're, you'll put a, a quotation mark and then of course you'll type in Hoovervilles. And that's going to allow me to know that it was the Hoovervilles website that you used. Let's say, well, miss, you know, I, I did a little extra. I added some more evidence from the Kentucky flood video. Okay, perfect. Well, you put a, this is, would be the citation for the Kentucky flood video. It would be Burke dash white. You can even, um, and just leave it like that. Sit down, Shrek. Close. Just like that. Um, I know I didn't add a space there. No, there we go. GM, sit down, strike. Or if you wanted to even add video, you can go ahead and add video. Just like that, okay? So these are your citations. This is what you need to have after whatever evidence you decide to use in your two seek paragraph, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that here. Don't forget, you do have all of these buttons here where you can go ahead and like edit how you're typing, edit your settings. So right here you have the little B to bold. You have the little italicize button, the little I to like ital italicize any um, titles or any uh, evidence that you have, right? Um, you have the underline symbol, you have things to make, um, you know, a little little dots there, but you're only writing a two seek paragraph. You're writing two. So this should not be too hard because we've studied this. So once you're finished, you're going to click the little button that says review. Once you finish writing all of your uh, information for two of your two seek paragraphs that are describing what hardships people faced in the Great Depression with your evidence and your elaboration and your concluding statement. You'll go ahead and you'll click review and then it'll go ahead and show you what you wrote written and then you just have to click finish in order to submit your assignment. Alrighty boys and girls well I'm sorry you know if I cut off a couple of times in this video but I just want to go ahead and say please make sure that you get your assignments done. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day um, and if you have questions you can message me. I won't guarantee that I'll write back because I am going to be in training um, but I hope you have a nice weekend and please make sure you get your assignments done so you can have an A and ELA and I will see you on Monday. Have a great one. Bye.